This video will let you snipe just like this in Black Ops Cold War. Just watch. Yo, what's good? It's about Roly, and welcome to a brand new video on my channel. This is a long awaited video that you guys asked me to do. You guys are always asking me for my settings on my Twitch and my YouTube, and here I am making this video for you guys. I'll be talking about my settings, about centering, about pre aiming, about spawns, about maps, and about class setups. So please make sure to watch the entire video through to really understand what I'm talking about. If you guys enjoy, smash a like and drop a sub down below, and let's get right into the video. So, the first thing I'll be going over are the controller settings. So if you scroll all the way down in controller settings, you will see target aim assist mode. Make sure this is on precision, this gives you the best aim assist in the game. Make sure target aim assist is enabled. Make sure that ADS aim assist is enabled as well. Make sure you guys have auto sprint enabled so you don't have to press in your stick to sprint, which will also reduce stick drift. Make sure that you guys have controller vibration disabled as well. Put aim response curve type to standard. And for sensitivity, you guys have to find your own sensitivity. I see people using 11-11 a lot, and I also see people using 14-14 a lot. You guys just have to mess around and see what's best for you. Same for the ADS stick sensitivity. Just mess around and see what's best for you. Just practice on some bots and you will be able to snipe way, way better on controller. Now for keyboard and mouse settings, I use the 13.2 mouse sensitivity, and I use one for all the ADS sensitivity multipliers and vehicle and all that stuff. I use gradual as ADS sensitivity transition timing, and I use one for vertical sensitivity multiplier. Make sure that ADS mouse sensitivity mode is on relative, and the rest is basically up to you. You can also change sensitivity and all that stuff. It really depends on your DPI as well. If you have a mouse that's wireless, you should have a software where you can adjust your DPI. And depending on your DPI, you might have to lower the mouse sensitivity or you have to like put it on a higher value. So I'm rocking the 300 DPI and that's why I have 13.2 since this feels the best to me. Another setting that you have to look out for is slide behavior because this is usually turned on hold automatically. So please put this on tab because if you have it on hold, you have to keep pressing control or C on keyboard to slide and circle or B on controller to slide. And if you have it on tab, you just have to tap it once and it will slide for you. You don't have to hold it, it makes it way easier. I see a lot of people using hold still, so please switch this to tab. It drives me crazy. <laughs> One big thing that a lot of people don't actually do is centering their shots or centering their body basically. As you can see in the middle of your screen you have a crosshair or a white dot. So every time you center your white dot onto an enemy that's basically what you ADS to. But as you can see my white dot was completely on him and I killed him. And this allows you to get more kills and easier kills as well because you don't have to drag scope that much. Of course you can drag scope but drag scoping is not as efficient than just lining up your shot. Practice it, go into some bots, just practice. All it takes is practice, it's not something that you guys can do right away. But the more you practice the better you get and it's really worth it, trust me. If you center make sure to stand still while shooting i see a lot of people they don't stand still while shooting they like move like left and right but if you do this your shot is not gonna be sent anymore and you're most likely going to miss okay so the next big thing that i'm gonna talk about is pre-aiming which you guys have probably seen in some of the sniping videos on youtube or just in my videos in general i used to pre-aim a lot pre-aiming means that i'm tapping my button on my mouse or you tap your button on your controller and you, you basically don't go out of your scope fully. This allows you to pre empt corners where people are and allows you to kill them faster. It just makes it a lot easier to hit your shots as well around corners and it gets your target off guard because they won't expect you 
already pre-aiming them. And that is why pre-aiming is so important as well. Not just your centering. It's in combination of both. Just try to practice this on bots like I said before and you will be so much better at sniping, trust me. On Nuketown there is A, B and C flag. This right here where I'm standing is A flag, I don't have the mode selected, but this is A flag, then B flag is right there in the middle by the car, and then C flag is all the way in the back spawn. So if you guys have A, but they have C and B, they are going to spawn in the middle on B, right there on the Jeep, and in the C spawn basically. And you guys are gonna spawn right there on A flag. But let's say you guys have A and B. That means that you guys are gonna spawn on A or B. The enemies are only gonna spawn in C. But that also means that you guys can push up to the spawn. Because if you're right here, you wanna hit a clip. They're gonna spawn in C. But if as soon as you push up more and get kills right here in their spawn, they're gonna flip to A. So what you guys have to look out for is... You have to kill people in the middle part of the map because they're all gonna be in the middle. And then as soon as you kill them, you go in and you basically kill them in their spawn. You don't push up into their spawn fully. You stay like right here and just look into their spawn. Of course, sometimes you can push out, but then they're gonna flip again. It's the same thing on the other side. If you have C and B, you're only gonna spawn A, so you kill the people in the middle. You walk up to their spawn and you kill them basically right there because they're gonna be spawning there. If there's no one spawning here, they're most likely gonna spawn on this side. But you get what I mean, you get the concept. Now before I go over the class setups for each sniper, it's also good to know which perks are the best ones for each mode. I will be going over the rag lobby perks and also the sniper only lobby perks. Because there's two different variations that you guys should use. So for snipers only, I always run paranoia, gung ho and ninja. The reason why you want to have gung ho is because it actually makes you ADS faster sometimes because as it says, fire your weapon and use equipment while sprinting, move at full speed while reloading, switch weapons faster and all that good stuff, which helps out a lot as well. And you will notice a big difference if you use gung ho and if you don't use gung ho. In snipers only, you don't need ghost simply because a lot of people use air patrol like me. And every time there's an enemy UAV in the air, I usually just destroy it with my air patrol or my teammates destroyed with air patrols or whatever, so that's why I don't need ghost. But you can always put on ghost if you want. For rec lobbies, I would consider using flag jacket and tactical mask, simply because of all the stuns and because of all the grenades and stuff. And then for perk 3, I would just simply use ghost, ninja or gung ho, you guys can choose whatever you want. I personally use ghost because there's gonna be a lot of UAVs and a lot of streaks in the air and stuff. If you play maps like Nuketown and stuff, you don't need ghost because it's such a small map. But let's say on maps like Crossroads or Moscow, you can definitely use Ghost. Like I said, you guys can always swap it around like you want. This is just a recommendation. So there's always different variation in what people use, but this is just what I'm using. Now going into the class setups, we're starting with the Tundra. On the Tundra, I'm using the Tiger Team Barrel, Tiger Team Spotlight, Infiltrator Grip, Seven Round Mag, and the Serpent Wrap. The Serpent Wrap is actually faster than the Airborne, so please don't use the airborne elastic grab anymore. It got nerfed so bad that it's not worth using it anymore. So please put on the serpent wrap. If you play most like SD, always put on the jungle grip. Going over to the Pullington, we're using the Tiger Team Barrel as well. Tiger Team Spotlight, Infiltrator Grip, 7 Wound Mag, and Serpent Wrap. Basically the same setup as the Tundra. For the M82, we're using the Tiger Team Barrel, Tiger Team Spotlight, the Bipod, 7 Wound Mag, and then the Serpent Wrap. For the Swiss, we're using the Tiger Team Barrel, Tiger Team Spotlight, the Bruiser Grip, 8 Round Magazine, and the Serpent Wrap. And lastly, for the ZRG, we're using the Rapid Fire Barrel for the best fire rate, the Bruiser Grip, the 5 Round Mag, Serpent Wrap, and CQB Pad. Of course, you can always change this around, but this is just what I am using. And on every single setup, there is a Tiger Team Spotlight. Of course, you can basically replace this with some other attachments if you want but the tiger team spotlight basically gives you a dot above the enemy which makes it better for you to see them and also helps you on maps like satellite or cartel okay so now i'll be going over the best graphics settings and overall settings for the game itself you can only change the hardware graphics settings on PC. You can't actually change it on console, I believe. For a refresh rate, I'm using 144 Hertz. Make sure this is on the highest one that you have. 
Make sure menu vsync and gameplay vsync is turned off. Make sure that Nvidia Reflex low latency is turned to enabled in brackets boosted. For colorblind settings, I'm using Tratanopia and I put the enemy color to this pinkish purple. This will just display enemies in pink purple and it will also help you with the tiger team spotlight because all the dots are not going to be red, they're going to be pink. Make sure ADS field of view is affected. I have my brightness on 75. You guys can put that as 75 or below, depending on your monitor. Make sure frame rate limit is to custom and then set the gameplay custom frame rate limit to your Hertz monitor. So basically I have a 144 Hertz. So you do minus three, which is 141. And that's what you put in here. Make sure menu custom frame rate is 60 and minimize game is 30. I just put everything on low because my PC can actually handle the game better if everything is turned to the lowest. But if you guys have a better PC, you can always turn it to medium or low or even high. It just depends on your PC. But for the most FPS and the most smooth gameplay, I put everything to the lowest. Most important thing right here is the motion blur quality and the motion blur. You should put motion blur to disable because this is gonna make your sight a little bit difficult because everything is gonna be blurry and you won't be able to see a lot of enemies. Going over to interface, make sure you have subtitles disabled. Going over to audio, if you guys want to have the classic hit marker sound effect, put this on classic. If you want to have the Black Ops Cold War hit marker sound effect, put this on default, but I have it on classic. Basically sounds like the BO4 hit marker sound effect. So those are basically all my settings. If you have any questions, I'm live on Twitch from Monday to Saturday at 9 p.m. Pacific time. So if you guys have questions, just jump in and I will answer them. If you guys have any tips for people, anything that I didn't mention, make sure to comment it down below in the comments. But other than that, it's been a Boroli and I'm out. Peace.